Yo, what's up guys? Matt from Upsilon Mining coming back at you with another YouTube video on mining and GPU mining. So as you all know, the Ethereum merge um, is slated to occur sometime. And from all indications that might be happening this year, historically, uh, though it could even happen next year or even the year after, depending on what happens, uh, the developers <clears throat> consistently say and state that they're going to release this um, on a certain schedule and it just keeps getting delayed historically that's just been the trend but that being said um, there probably will come a time when ethereum will go off um, proof of work obviously it's going to happen they've been wanting uh, gunning towards this change for years now and obviously they can't delay indefinitely. So at some point it's gonna happen, whether that's the end of the year, whether that's next year, whatever the case. Now, when that time comes, um, if you've recently watched a video by Seb's, um, by Seb, who also does a lot of YouTubing, the guy's amazing. You guys probably heard of him before. I'll put a link actually right above uh, me right now. Uh, watch this video. And essentially, he does a breakdown where he takes all the hash power from Ethereum, which is one petahash, and does a distribution of that hash rate across all the other coins and algorithms. And essentially, the profitability essentially tanks because the other coins can't handle the incoming load. Um, and then uh, the consensus is that you know it's going to rotate, which is the most profitable, almost in a day-to-day -day, um, type of thing. So now one strategy you could do is you could just set up all your flight sheets, uh, you know, or your, all your overclocks for all the other algorithms. I don't know how many you're going to have to cycle through. It could be quite a few, um, and it could be quite involved to have to do that regularly. Right now with Ethereum, most of us mine Ethereum on our, on our GPUs, and we don't have to worry about switching, switching the flight sheets and algorithms continuously just because Ethereum essentially is the king of profitability. But... What if you wanted it to do it on its own? Now that's an interesting question, I think. And I think this is where we might, where it might be <clears throat> beneficial to start looking to something like NiceHash or an auto profit switching type of tool, right? So NiceHash, I looked into this and I was curious if I could just run like the quick miner inside of, um, inside of HiveOS. And I don't know if you can do that, but I did do some digging and I started looking for, well, there's a, is there a Linux version of HiveOS? So what I did find is that there uh, is a Linux version, but it's called NiceHash OS, NiceHash OS, which is their own Linux distribution, looks like, that runs uh, NiceHash. Now, I got, I got to thinking. So if you have, you know, like a dozen rigs, or I think I got like 15 rigs now. If all, I a lot of these rigs, it's going to be a lot of work to reflash drives and and you don't want to get you don't want to lose your overclocks and everything else from hive os so i think what the best strategy is is to essentially get one of these flash drive okay and flash this with hive os no i don't flash this with nice hash os okay and then essentially set up your BIOS to boot off the USB in sequence and then the hard drive. So when this USB is in, it's going to boot off this. When you pull it out, it'll boot off whatever's there before, which would be NiceHash. So first, uh, I have OS. So first off, if you haven't done so already, if you're running off a USB for for Hive OS, I recommend getting a, a, just a regular, SS, uh, a regular SSD drive. So pick up an SSD drive like this one here. Okay, pick up an SSC drive and move the what you have on HiveOS onto this drive and then have that connected with the SATA data cable on your rig. That's your primary boot up method. Secondary boot up method, which will actually be first if this is plugged in. I guess it's the other way, second first. So it'll boot off USB first. They're gonna flash nice hash onto this USB. Okay? When we flash nice hash OS onto this USB, when the time comes, when the merge happens and everyone's profitability just tanks, obviously, uh, and you just can't keep up with the switching every single day, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this USB and you're gonna stick the USB into your mining rig and then your mining rig is gonna boot up on NiceHash and you're gonna link that NiceHash uh, rig to your NiceHash account and then hopefully 
it's going to automatically switch the algorithms day to day while you just do nothing. Um, I know with Quick Miner, it'll automatically tune the cards as well and overclock the cards, but you might have to do some work with overclocking uh, these cards. But since it's Linux based, you should be able to just bring over the overclocks that you have from Hive OS. So let's get started um, with this. And the first thing I did was basically I downloaded this. Um, Yep. So I downloaded essentially. Let's download it again. So you go to nicehash.com slash NHOS mining. I'll put the link below. Um, so the Linux image, you need at least probably, I'd say a gigabyte. So you could probably just go on eBay or Amazon, just get a bunch of these USBs and just enough for the nice hash image. Um, Looks pretty good, looks pretty interesting. Uh, it's free also, which is cool. And they do pay out in Bitcoin. So that's another big thing, right? If you don't want to mine all these Raven coins and all these Ergo and different altcoins, and basically it'll mine all these coins and pay you in Bitcoin. So you have Bitcoin, which is actually really good. This is something I'm really have been considering depending on what it's, how bad it's gonna be or, or, or how unprofitable it might become after Ethereum merge. So what you're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead there, download the flash tool Okay, so first thing, download the Flash tool for Windows, which I'm doing here, and the image. I've already done both. So we've gone and updated the uh, nice hash flashing utility. It's going to download it now and update it. So let's just wait a second for that to happen. And then make sure you select the correct um, USB drive. You don't want to be selecting your ex your external storage drive that you might have all your pictures or your videos on or, or whatever. Make sure you select the right one, otherwise uh, you might run into a situation where you lose data. So let's just let this update real quick and be right back. Okay, so now that it's updated successfully, the next thing you want to do now is select your flash drive. So I have two flash drives. Make sure you select the one with that you want to flash. If you select the wrong one, you're gonna burn over top of that one. You don't want that. So this is the flash drive. It's an eight gigabyte drive. And then I'm gonna go over to here. Um, and here's my nice hash. I only have three rigs on nice hash right now, but I'm gonna go get the wallet. So I'm gonna to go to click on mining address, copy this here. This is actually a Bitcoin deposit address for a nice hash. Go back to the nice hash configuration Put in your BTC address there, so this will link this ins this drive to your NiceHash account, which is pretty cool. And we're gonna hit flash, and we're gonna let that go, and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's up to 50%. It's going nicely. Okay, guys, so we opened up Hive OS here, and what we have, what I have here, is uh, Rig H001, which is my hanging rig, and I decided to use this rig for our testing because literally it's kind of right behind me, uh, so it's easy for me to swap in a USB and just see what's going on. So what we're doing now is, um, on this rig, we are running um, Ethereum mining with T-Rex, the latest version, so 0 0.25.12, we're pulling 279 mega hash now assuming that the merge happened like right now today um and we don't know which algorithm it's going to which is going to be the most profitable which coin will be the most profitable each day each hour i mean it could be the wild wild west out there with the coins basically so what um ideally in that situation we, we i would do or i would think is one of my strategies is just basically push in this USB, which was just uh, successfully flashed. Um, so now, basically, since I entered my mining address in NiceHash OS and the USB is flashed, all I need to do is set up my BIOS to boot off the USB first, push this in, um, and then it should boot right up. So let's go on over to that computer and we will see what it is doing there. All right, guys, so once the USB has been flashed with NiceHash OS, what you need to do is open up the drive that you now have, so NHOS, uh, open up this file called configurations.txt. Now I have this here. Now the thing with NiceHash OS, it's not as user-friendly as HiveOS. You have to manually set your, your information in here. So there's a configurations.txt file inside here. Uh, there's a thing called rig um, as well. So what what you want to do here is uh, give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, worker. We can call it um, so upsilon rig 
H001, which is the same name as it is in HiveOS, just to be consistent. Uh, and then you have to now manually, if you're using a Wi-Fi connection, you need to manually enter the Wi-Fi. So since I'm using a Wi-Fi connection, I'm going to go in here and enter the Wi-Fi details. So get the SSID of your um, of your network. So pull it from the Windows, go to the, uh, your wireless properties, uh, put that in here. And then put in your password. Hit save. Once it's been saved, uh, close the file off. And then now what you can do is boot into a Hive OS. Make sure you set up the BIOS to boot off the USB first. And then the Hive OS SSD will be the second in the list of boot priority. So I will see you there. All right, guys, so we got a uh, nice hash OS booted up. It took a couple tries. Make sure you get the configuration right. Make sure you put the network name and the SSID, and the key would be the password. Um, I had some issues with the Wi-Fi, so I ended up just kind of connecting a, a um, an Ethernet cable to the rig to try it that way. Um, so these are some of the preliminary results uh, I just want to talk about real quick. So uh, on the top there, as you see, we have the original hash rate in, Hi in uh, Hive OS, which is 279.9. These are with optimized overclocks um, that I did myself to get the most amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, hash rate. And then at the bottom, we do have the ha uh, nice hash results here, which are... Uh, less than um, thrilling, if you ask me. So, uh, for one thing, I did notice that the uh, RTX 3080 um, and 3060 was mixed up. They uh, one was reporting uh, invalid number, a uh, higher number, like basically in the uh, in the 80s, 87 hash rate on mega hash per second on uh, Dagger Hashimoto, which is Ethereum. Uh, on a 3060, which is not the right device. So it's clearly um, mismatching devices. I'm not sure if this is a bug or some issue with NiceHash OS, um, but it's something noting that, uh, that isn't very nice to see. I mean, I'm on the dashboard here in NiceHash and seeing this, um, it's not lining up properly and it should be. So right there, to me, that's kind of a deal breaker as well. Uh, as the hash rates themselves are not very good either. So we're looking at 31 and 30 mega hash per second. The latest T-Rex miner on HiveOS gets at least 39 mega hash on these 3060s, and this is less than thrilling uh, as well. Um, so uh, the, the, the 13080 there is, uh, is always kind of throttling a bit. It's this due to poor thermal, so I'm replacing that with a copper plate. But I mean, that being said, the, uh, across the board, the hash rate is actually down to 235 from 279. We're losing significant hash rate. Um, no, each each item is set to be the maximum um, high as well, so that's kind of becoming an issue uh, considering we've maxed out the power. Uh, and there are ways to overclock this uh, in nice hash OS using that config file, which is kind of a pain in the butt I think and I also did find some things online about how the overclocking does not work with nice hash OS now I, I'd love to just use a Linux based nice hash OS versus having to you know spool up a Windows um, drive and then install everything on that um, so it's just um, a little bit disappointing to, to be honest I'd w much rather uh, have this uh, working this way and just boot off a USB drive so um, I don't know guys uh, maybe running nice the quick miner nice hash quick miner on a Windows 10 uh, image would be better than trying to run this nice hash OS uh, personally I didn't have a lot of luck so I'll be switching back to Hive OS right away it's just not working for me right now so I don't know guys do, do you guys have any uh, any other suggestions below? Do you have, have you had better luck with the Nice Hash OS itself, or you have, have you had similar issues with it? Do you have any uh, suggestions on overclocking this? It just doesn't seem like it's just not there, right? And compared to uh, compared to Hype OS, it's just not there. So I mean, all this was this was an interesting experiment. I I don't say I would recommend this as a sort of uh, uh, a solution. Once the merge happens, unless they tremendously get on this and improve this uh, nice hash OS and have it basically the quick miner baked into nice hash uh, OS as well as the ability to do the overclocking right through the UI, 
um, that would be really good. I think they really need to up their game, and um, their big seller is the profit switching algorithm. If they can get this profit switching stuff working properly, they can really sell this as the post merge tool uh, just because people don't want to have to bother with switching flight sheets all the time so uh, I'll do another video on um, on probably the dice hash a uh, quick minor and Windows 10 which which a million people have done already but that might be the better option my thing is I wanted to just be basically run everything off a boot drive as USB drive it's a quickly switch back and forth between the two without having to upset what I have currently on Hive OS. So anyways, guys, comment below if you like this video, if you feel this was helpful, not helpful, if you have any suggestions on Hive, uh, nice hash OS itself, I would like to hear from you. Until next time, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. Now, I really wanted to love this. I really wanted this to work just for the ease of use. I've used Quick Miner in Windows 10 before, and it's amazing. It's very easy in Windows. You run Quick Miner, it does an auto tune sort of thing, and you can adjust, like, um, uh, if you're in optimized mode to, you know, low to high power modes as well. Uh, and then there's ability to overclock the, the devices on Windows itself, which is, which also helps as well. I really wanted to love this for the Linux because I thought it would be really easy to just switch between a USB drive and the SSD, which is kind of right on the, on the motherboard. So you could just, you know, flip between Hive OS and uh, this nice hash OS very easily. But unfortunately, it didn't seem like it's... It doesn't seem like it's quite there yet, but I'm really hoping the NiceHash team will get on it and to update their web UI to allow the overclocks right from the web UI. Um, I'd also like the ability for um, for, uh, for for it to actually list and match the mega hash rates to the proper cards. That would be nice as well. As you saw in there, the 3060s was not matching uh, where it should have been. I think it was reporting that one of the 3080 hash rates on a 3060, which is wrong. So there's obviously some issues and some defects in the software still. Anyways, guys, as always, I appreciate uh, and each and every one of you and your subscribes and your views are, mean the world to me. So please remember to subscribe, like, and hit that uh, Hit that notification bell and I will see you in the next one. Bye.